Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jonathan Floridelis and we are going to talk today about a holistic approach for knee osteoarthritis. You can call me Dr. Joff and we are going to make this an interactive discussion where we will be talking and it's not just going to be about me. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to ask if you're really listening to this lecture. Please feel free to comment in the chat below. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm actually a speaker for Taisho Pharmaceuticals and that is my only disclosure for this talk. My experience with osteoarthritis actually comes from the fact that my father is an orthopedic surgeon like myself. My mother is actually a rehab specialist and so I know a lot about osteoarthritis from them treating their patients and I have my own experiences as well. As we know, our parents guide us, take care of us, but later in life, osteoarthritis is a wear and tear disease. And sadly, my father is no longer as strong as he once was. He now has knee pain and my mother had surgery on her knee as well. So this led me to the conclusion that it is now our time to take care of our loved ones. We don't want them to stay in pain. And this is my parents actually riding the bike, still strong, still happy, because we are treating their knee pain. So I hope this topic drives close to home so that you can treat your loved ones. Now, you may have someone in your home with osteoarthritis. I'm sure you may have patients crying already as they enter your clinic because they have been in severe pain for so long. We have all treated patients with osteoarthritis one way or another, and the first thing that we give them are pain relievers. Now, aside from the physical pain, it's not just going to be about pain relievers. We want to treat them, their physical pain, and understand that osteoarthritis can impact lives, especially in the social and psychological aspect. A lot of my patients are estranged from their children because of the fact they're always in pain. And when they are always in pain, they're always complaining. And when they always complain, their children no longer want to listen to them. Always nagging. Who among you have felt that when the patient is always demanding, always nagging, we no longer want to listen to them? Now, I want you to type in the chat below with a yes if you have felt that super demanding patients are sometimes difficult and you no longer feel that you want to communicate with them you'd rather avoid them because they drain your energy so type yes in the chat below if you felt this way one time or another because i want to know that you also have been treating these types of patients, really difficult patients whose physical, social, and psychological life have been impacted by pain. Now, thank you for answering in the chat below. I also want to share with you the techniques that I have actually discovered to treat my own patients, treating them not just their physical pain, because when they are crying in my office, it's really hard to give advice and what is really needed is me sitting down, taking my time to listen to them before I give them these techniques. And there are studies that validate mindfulness techniques, which I also teach my patients. It can be as easy as teaching them, teaching them gratitude practices, mindfulness and breathing exercises. And I'm going to ask you to do a breathing exercise with me right now. And I want you to learn that the type of breathing or the way that we breathe actually affects our whole body. This is what I call the 5-5-5 five, five, five breathing. And instead of breathing into the nose, we can breathe through the mouth. If You can also breathe through the nose if you like. But we want it to be a diaphragmatic breathing. That means the air, instead of going through the lungs, no, we're not going to go breathe that way. We're going to breathe in and let the air enter our 
abdomen, our stomach. So when I breathe, I'm going to be breathing like not moving my chest because the air is going here in five seconds. The first five seconds is inhale. The second five seconds, you hold your breath. And the last five seconds, we exhale. And that is the 5-5-5 five, five, five breathing. Ask your patients who are really anxious, who come into the clinic with any type of problem. Try to listen to them. And when they have told you their life story, sometimes my patients start at 5 years old. They had an injury that affected their knees later in life. You have to listen to these patients. Why? Because no one listens to them anymore. And that is why it's very important to give these patients time, be present, and it will be immense, immensely helpful for them. Because the way you listen to a patient really shows how much you care for your patients. And it's also known that these techniques can reduce knee pain and dysfunction, decreasing stress, and improving your mood and sleep. Now let's go to the next thing, which is diet. A lot of patients tell me, Doc, my doctor has told me there's no diet for arthritis because my arthritis is not gout. Well, the fact is there are many foods that can be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. So even if you have no rheumatoid arthritis or gouty arthritis, please be aware that osteoarthritis patients can also have an effect depending on the food that they eat. And it's been studied that low-carb diets and ketogenic diets can also decrease the pain of the patient in decreasing overall inflammation in your body. That's why this is now the target of the probiotics nowadays. There are probiotics targeting the gut because we have a joint gut connection this connection is called the joint gut axis this is now being studied because what we eat affects the whole body including our joints and this has been linked to many types of arthritis including inflammatory arthritis weight loss and osteoarthritis has also been studied we always know that patients' weight affects their knee pain, but we most of the time forget. I am guilty of not telling my patients about weight loss and diet, but the truth is majority of these patients, according to this study, are very much willing to lose weight, exercise, if advised properly by their physician. Now, what I feel is, yes, I sometimes forget. Because maybe it's insensitive to say it. Maybe that's what you're thinking. You're not very sure if this patient might be offended. But the truth is we have to tell our patients. This is how we show we care. Because we need to tell them that they need to lose weight if you feel your patient is overweight. Now, exercise is something that is both good and bad for patients. Exercise can improve pain scores, but if you do too much, it can lead to more knee pain. Especially for patients who already have patellofemoral and grade 4 osteoarthritis. So be aware that finding a sweet spot of making your patients active, but not giving them too much to handle, is really key. And partnering in my practice with a rehab doctor or rheumatologist really helps. If the patient has no access to rheuma or rehab doctors, then a friendly physical therapist is also very helpful. And when talking about physical therapy, my patients always ask me about, Doc, is it okay to give like cold compress, warm compress? Most of the studies are showing that heat decreases discomfort and has a relaxing and calming effect on osteoarthritis patients. One thing that's being studied is heat shock protein 70 that exactly gives these effects to patients. And the other thing is the TENS. Electric stimulation can improve muscle tone and improve the pain of your patients. A lot of patients also ask me about massage. 
Now comment below if you had patients asking you about these things, about which is better, warm or cold compress, therapy, and lastly, massage. Doc, okay lang po ba magpamasahe? Now type below yes or no if you feel that this is something that has happened to you or not. Now, the, this is the fact that massage is only very good for a short-term management of knee osteoarthritis pain. Beyond eight weeks, it does not have any additional benefit. So if you want to have a massage twice a week is something that can be good for your joint pain, but beyond that eight-week mark, twice a week massage can even give you more pain than pleasure. These recommendations are still being used today. The 2014 recommendations that are joint therapeutic guidelines for osteoarthritis by the ULAR, the ORC, the ACR, and the SAO, a joint recommendation and guideline for osteoarthritis showing that number one, we can give paracetamol up to three to four grams per day plus a topical NSAID. A lot of our patients like to put and apply oils, liniments, gels, and anything on their knee because it's really painful. Please advise them that these oils and liniments and gels can be a medium for the bacteria to go inside the joint. So make sure that their knees, their hands are clean and what they're using is not expired. So topical NSAID plus paracetamol, first line in these guidelines. And if the patient is still symptomatic, you have to know two things. Is there an increased GI risk? Has the patient had bleeding disorders, ulcers? If so, you may want to use a COX-2 selective NSAID plus a proton pump inhibitor. If the patient's risk for GI is low, you can use a non-selective NSAID and a proton pump inhibitor. Now, our preference is naproxen sodium. Why? Their studies are showing, and these are 53 randomized controlled trials that mention naproxen was ranked the most effective individual treatment for osteoarthritis, improving both pain and function. That's number one, followed by number two, cortisone injections, PRP, ibuprofen, and celecoxib. So if you are thinking of a non-selective NSAID, if your patient has low GI risk, you can give naproxen. For those who have increased cardiovascular risk, if your patient has had stents placed and has knee pain, then you may also use naproxen. Previous studies have shown it is actually cardioprotective, but the truth is it's not really cardioprotective, but it is the least cardiotoxic of the non-selective COX-2 inhibitors. The more COX-2 selective the NSAID becomes, the more cardiotoxic it is. And for those patients with increased renal risk, avoid NSAIDs altogether because kidneys will fail. The other thing are knee injections. We've already talked about PRP, HA, and of course, cortisone shots. The guidelines mention only these two, cortisone and HA. PRP is still being studied, although it has been shown to have some effect on osteoarthritis. If the patient really has severe pain, please advise your patients that it is not always the rule that they get six months to one year of pain relief with injections. The degree of osteoarthritis can actually affect the pain of our patient, although that's not the case all the time. Who among you here have had patients with severe osteoarthritis but no pain at all? No pain, meaning they're able to bike or walk even if they have grade 4 osteoarthritis. Comment in the chat below if you've had these patients because there are a subset of osteoarthritis patients with a very high pain threshold. So I just want to know. Hope you can share your experience in the chat. Thanks so much. With grade 4 osteoarthritis and everything else has failed, these patients are the ones where we do 
a total knee replacement. And what I ask my patients is what they want. Do they want to walk again with less pain, travel again, see their relatives abroad, go to the mall, go back to church? Instead of staying in a wheelchair, this is an option provided they are willing to do the rehab and of course be ready for surgery because this is one of the most most successful surgeries by far 98% success rate 2% lang yung risk and complications the total knee replacement in this surgery we remove the diseased cartilage and replace it with a polyethylene material and metal and with this the patients can walk as early as 24 hours and in abroad in the US in Europe they're already doing outpatient knee replacement surgeries so within the same day patient is already walking total knee replacement again is something that I offer for patients who really want to walk again with less pain and they have tried everything already we do private and we do charity surgeries for knee replacement in our institution. And here's a patient who's all walking. She is a nun who really wanted to go up and down the stairs in her convent. And she is happy walking without a walker three days after surgery. Now, before I go, I want to share with you some secrets when dealing with osteoarthritis patients. To be able to serve these patients powerfully, Taking a good history for me means listening to the patient even if they have a long story to tell. Again, a lot of these patients are very irritable. No one likes to listen to them. And the fact that you are listening through their story will show them how much you care. Even if you are already late for your previous appointments, it really helps in my case. So anyway, next Physical examination is key. I want to know if the patient has patellofemoral pain, meniscus injury, medial collateral ligament injuries, because then I know exactly how to treat them. And just touching the patient, again, makes them feel cared for, rather than rushing them and giving them medicines and pain relievers and giving them an injection. Touch is key. And lastly, I will get labs, especially an x-ray, just to be reassured and try to tell the patients that this is not a cancer that is bothering you. It is just arthritis. We can treat it and we can lessen your pain. Again, I hope you enjoyed this time listening and sharing your experiences with me. For my ending, I would like to end this talk by saying these patients, most of them elderly, they will forget what you did, that your treatments, even forget that you did surgery on them. They will forget your advice, but they will not forget how you made them feel. So I hope you make your patients feel cared for because that is something that they will never forget. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good night, doctors. Feel free to comment in the chat below for any questions on how you deal with these difficult patients with osteoarthritis. Much love, Dr. Joff.